The church today is not and is not, my friend, it is not a beacon for the lost. It is not the one who is the charter of the course, who opens the road, who says, follow me, this is the way to go. The church follows the world and has no authority with God. And finally, the church today is naked. The Greek word is gumnos and it means stark, raven, naked. What does that mean, preacher? It means that there are people outside that never darken a church door. Some of those people have a better sense of morality and right and wrong than the crowd that go to church every Sunday because they were taught it by their mothers and fathers and grandmothers and grandfathers from an age long past. The morality that resides in the human soul is something that is passed from generation to generation. And this generation today that comes into the church that calls itself the bride of Christ lives like, looks like, smells like, talks like the world. So what do we have to offer to the world? If there's not someone within you that is greater than them, if there's not something in you that has power over them, if there's not something in you that has joy that they don't have, you have nothing to give to them. I say to the atheist, you say there is no God. Let me say to you, atheist, you have nothing to offer me. You got nothing. You're completely bankrupt. And then when your time to die comes and you look off into a dark eternity, I want to see what kind of attitude you have as you leave this world believing there is no God. Because believe me, five minutes after death, there are no atheists. So what do you have to offer to this lost and dying world? A bunch of rhetoric, a bunch of talk. Somebody said to a preacher, I'd like to see revival in America. I would too. Let me tell you how to have revival in America. Say, how can you have revival in America, preacher? It'd be very simple. All of the Baptists and all of the Methodists and all of the Presbyterians and all of the Roman Catholics and the whole so-called Christian crowd, if they would get on their knees and confess and repent for putting an antichrist into the house up there and say, Lord God, forgive me, God might bring revival. Amen. That would be a quite a thing, wouldn't it? Yeah. Don't tell me that you pray and read your Bible and have a relationship with God if you're a baby killer. Yeah. Don't tell me that. Yeah. Don't make a fool out of me and you both. If you kill babies, my friend, you don't know a thing about walking with God. Yeah. Well, you say, preacher, I voted my belly. Thank you for telling the truth. That's what you did. You voted your belly because your God is your belly. You thought that one would feed you better. How are you feeding now? How are they eating now in the country when you've got a huge number of people out there that can't find a job? You say, I've got a job. I'm glad you have, but a bunch of them don't have. And it's not going to get any better. It's getting worse by the day. When the Bible says, in the wicked rain, the people mourn. So the church, in the book of Revelation, ends in total apostasy. Then the Gentile age has come to a close. In the book of Revelation, the Gentile age ceases as we know it. The Gentile powers are brought to their knees as we know it. In other words, the Gentile rule on this earth comes to a glorious, destructive end. Hallelujah. <laughs> Nothing would please me more than to see every Gentile army, every Gentile power, all the Gentile boasting and bragging brought to a complete consummation at the second coming of Christ. Let him come with his kingdom. Let him come with his righteousness. Let him come with his glory. Enough of men and their boasting and their bragging and their guns and their armies. Hallelujah to God. Show me one thing that any Gentile nation has ever done when it comes into total apostasy than to turn its back on God and drag its people down with it. And that's where America's headed right now. And you may go down with it if you don't know the Lord. Amen. Then the angels are mentioned in the book of Revelation. The Bible said the, uh, the word of God and the commandments came by the disposition of angels. The scripture talks in the book of Revelation about a mighty angel that comes down from heaven and puts one foot on the sea and one foot on the land and declares time to be no more. The book of Revelation talks about an angel that flies through the heavens and declares the everlasting gospel. The angels are prominent in the book of Revelation. Why? Because it is a spiritual confrontation. 
from, from Revelation 1 through chapter number 22, over and over and over again, the book of Revelation is about a confrontation between good and evil, between God and the Antichrist, Christ and the Antichrist, the truth and a lie. And it all comes to a consummation. It comes to a head. It dovetails together. And folks, some of you young people right in here this morning, you might have been born into the terminal generation where you see the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. What, my, what a marvelous thing that would be. And that may be you. You may be here today. You may be the one that You may be here the shout. You may hear a trumpet in the heavens. The archangel appears all of a sudden and the glory of God unfolds like he did on that day when they announced the birth of Christ. And the heavens rolled back like a scroll. And all of a sudden, all the unbelievers and all of the skeptics, those that make fun, are going to be faced with a decision and a choice like they never imagined would ever happen in their lives. And they'll take the mark because their God's their belly. They believe what Satan said, skin for skin. All that a man hath will he give for his skin. They live for their skin. They preach for their skin. They minister for their skin. Their churches are all about their skin. That's all their life is about, their skin. Like a hog, you put the slop in the trough, they never look up to see where it comes from. They just oink in there and slop the hogs. That's the way most people live today. Most people that go to the church house are like that. Listen, if you could get the church, just the church, those that have crosses on their buildings and stained glass windows and pipe organs, those that, that have all of the accoutrements of religion and all of the names of denominations and all the garbage that goes with it, if you could just get them to get right with God, you'd turn this country around just like that.